I always smile when I think of her because she was um, a really joyful person. She was um, just the kind of older sister that you would <laughs> sort of, I would imagine anyone would want. Pues era una muchacha muy pues, alegre en sus momentos, le gustaba andar haciendo chistes, bailando, brincando. No sé, era mi primera hija, la más grande, entonces era, era todo para mí, eran muchas emociones. The Damon de Adrian Dow. He was a funny son, funny, always had a full of jokes. At 3.30 in the morning, the phone rang, and it was, um, they said they were from the medical examiner. And he said, well, we have Damon with us, and Damon has been killed. She worked with adolescents and young adults, and she had a client who was mentally ill and she invited him to come in and talk about it and you know because he was really upset about it and so he did come in but um, he came in with with a gun and he um, he shot my sister and three other women and they were and they all died in the moment when she se fue es, es como quitarle un una esquina, un edificio, tratarlo de tirar. And when they told me who the suspect was, I was totally floored. I said, no, it's not. You have the wrong person. And they said, well, his name is Dante Carruthers. He's uh, just turned 17. Estaba con la policía, lo tenían abajo, esposado. Y le pregunté por qué había hecho eso. El ver en sus ojos de él la reacción que volteaba a ver a los policías y les decía, no es cierto, no es cierto, ella no está muerta. ¿Verdad que todos están bien? ¿Ella está bien? The boy that murdered my son has a sentencing of life without parole plus 15 years. He'll never see the street again. The way it sounds from here, he'll die in prison. I've given a lot of thought to the issue of, of, of life without parole for, for young people, for adolescents. And it, it seems so important to me that people understand that, that a, a young person, a, an adolescent, is not a fully formed person yet. No creo que por ser, hacer cosas de mayores mentalmente sean piensen como como adultos creo que es la etapa de la inmadurez donde creen que que pueden comerse a lo mejor el el mundo kids are kids and uh, their lifestyles and the things that they grow up with and see may have something to do with why they do the things that they do because they absolutely don't understand life period entonces Verle, verle la parte de atrás, su vida que han llevado atrás y respecto a su vida que hayan llevado, es también juzgarlos, no nada más en la primera. Life without chance of parole for these young people is devastating. Es la juventud, es el futuro de la, del mundo, entonces sería mejor enfocar en ayudarlos. I want young people in California to have the opportunity to know that there is hope, that if they change themselves, if they transform their lives, if they take responsibility for the harm that they've done, that they have the hope that one day they could leave prison and be connected again with their community and their loved ones. Obviously you deal with juveniles yes. probably quite frequently. What's the biggest challenge of dealing with the juvenile population when they're out doing what it is they do to bring them in here? I would say their behavior. Yeah. Yeah, their behavior, their um, temper sometimes can flare. You know, so dealing with their behavior and um, what they're coming in for. So, 
Do you ever get scared when you're out on the streets and not knowing exactly what could happen next? No. I don't even think of it. Don't even give it a second thought. Have you seen a difference in juvenile crime? You know, over the years, do you find the kids are any more violent today? Or what, what's your kind of observation of juvenile offenders? I would say, yeah, it's just um, getting out of hand. You know, I don't know um, where their background is in parenting or both uh, parents are in their in their lives or whatever, but it's, uh, it's, it's getting bad. You know, more and more seem to be coming in and um, breaking more of the laws out there. Normal. So from a police officer's perspective, what would you like to see done? Can you guys think We're of corrections. Oh, okay. correctional, yeah, officers. Cor correctional officers. Yes. You know, can you think of anything that you think, you know, might help you guys in your job in dealing with these kids or something that might help these kids stop and think before they act? Uh, I would say more mentors. Mentors being out there on, a, um, on the streets, visiting their, their schools. Um, more uh, social activity clubs with them. Something to keep them off the streets um, and active in is a positive it, way. Is it worse in the summer? Uh, yeah, I would, I would say so. More people out, you know, there's more people out and um, there's more things going on in the summer, so. More trouble for them to get into. More trouble for them to get into, yes. Is dealing with juveniles more difficult than dealing with adult offenders? Can Sometimes their immature level, their immaturity can um, can um, be a factor, but um, the adults mostly too are um, are a handful. A handful. So it all matters on what kind of a, a day they wake up to, or what they're going through in their minds mentally. And kids tend to be a little more impulsive than the yeah, adults. less patience. Any final words you'd like to say about dealing with kind of kids in the system? What like maybe people, uh, you know, don't understand about the juvenile population or the challenges you deal with? Um, no, not really. No comments to that. So. My brother three, and you know when I look and see him get my age, I don't want him going to jail. You know, people like you know what I'm saying people murdering his friends, him being around drugs. You know, I don't want all that. I want him to live a life that I couldn't live because I ain't have a father figure. I ain't have a big brother. I'm the oldest, oldest child. So you're you know, trying to set an example for not only your child it's, but for your younger brother? For my younger brother. And you know, it started with him first anyway. You know, I didn't see that as the, like the years I was coming up, you know, 15, 16. But I ain't going to lie, going to boys' school, I'm not going to lie, that changed my life. Not because, like, I was scared. You know, because I was tough because I went through it. You know, that's what made me tough because I went through that. And a lot of people can't do that. And, you know, I just don't, like, if I can tell anybody, like, all these dudes in here, they think they tough now. You know, they bang on their doors. And, you know, they just don't know what they're not getting themselves into. You know, there's so much other stuff that you can do with your life than be sitting in jail. You know, and I can't sit here and tell nobody just because I'm sitting here now. But, you know, I just was at the wrong place at the wrong time. And if I, if I would have knew that I had people that, that was like that, that would leave stuff like that around, and for me to go to jail, I would have never been there. But you know, you got to learn from your mistakes. Well, I'm, I'm depressed. I'm very depressed, but like I said, I got to be a strong man. I got to be the, got to be the, try to be a leader. Can't just let everything keep me down, but my family and them, they need me because they ain't, my, my two oldest brothers, they gone. My dad, he's locked up. So right now it's just my mom and my six sisters and my nieces and nephews. And they don't have no like man of the house to, to look up to, to teach them what's right or what's wrong so I can teach my nephews and my youngest brother the right things to do. Since my brothers and them gone, my dad's locked up. It been hard. It been hard without, it been hard for me to just be in here and not being at home with my family because they need me just as well I need them. Yeah, I, I think it's very important for both parents to be there, you know what I'm saying? You need to have a, if it's a boy, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the father needs to have, you know what I'm saying, 
the, the little boy needs to have a father in his life to, you know what I'm saying, go down the right path successfully because if not, you know what I'm saying, it, he feels like, the, the child feels like, what's wrong with me? Why ain't my father here? You know what I'm saying? You see other kids, whatever, you, they got their parents around both their parents and you're thinking like, why ain't my life like that? You know what I'm saying? Why, why isn't my father here? Or why aren't both of my parents here? Like, why do they have to sell drugs and get go to prison? I mean, yeah, Dio Big L, he, he's a cool guy. He, you could get along with, you could talk to him. You could have fun with him. He's, he's cool. Like, he'll joke around, like he'll play around with you for a minute, but he, he take his job serious at the same time, but at the same time, he have fun while he doing it. And it make us feel like at least we had somebody in here that at least care about us and don't want us to be in here forever. Like Big L, he he always tell me like, why do I always be in these situations why, where I end up coming here? I just tell him, man, I just be making the wrong choices. Then he like, man, you gotta, like he'll talk to me like, like a father talk to me. Your whole family, they need you. You got one life. You being here, you destroy. This is no place for no man. No man. And if you throw all that away, it won't amount to anything. He'll tell you, man, you can't be doing all that, man. You know, life is not what you think it is. It's, you got to live your life, make the best of it, do the right things, make the right choices. If you make the right choices, do the right thing, you'll go somewhere. Somewhere in life, you could be somebody. So my mom, so that's two childs that's involved in my life. Now the one that's already big, I'm starting to like, trying to get into her life. And you How know old the, is she? She three. And the other one not even here yet. Like, and that's what was really hurting me and that's what really made me think like I'm gonna be something like my father because I hate being in the category of that. You mean your kids now are gonna be looking and having memories of their dad yeah, being in jail? Yeah, like my dad having, like why my dad don't have any pictures of me when I was a baby? You know, that's what I think about. Like all my pictures I look at, they be with my mom, grandma, and I look like with my father. You know, he ain't he one now. Why, because he was in jail.